If money was no object, and a man was determined to build an interplanetary spaceship, what would happen? For the answer, Chrysler now brings you Test Flight. Starring Lee J. Cobb. Yes. Yes, I, uh, I, I agree with you completely. Well? Uh, I'll... I'll call you later, yes. Has the committee decided what kind of pink tea it's going to serve? Well, we've decided, Wayne, that, a, that an undertaking like this uh, requires a general meeting of the board of directors. No. But, Wayne... I gave you exactly two minutes to come to a decision. Now, what's it going to be, a green light or a stop sign? Well, Wayne, it's hard to conceive of this type of venture on a moment's notice. I, I doubt if even you thought this thing through enough. Davis, I've lived this day and night for the last six months. I've read every book, every article on space travel I could lay my hands on. Spoken to every astrophysicist in the country. I know what I'm talking about. Look at this. These charts. We've got to fly out of here first. Break out of here. That's what it'll do on our first test flight. Break out of the... the... this... into the stratosphere. Wait a minute. Here's a velocity chart. Shows how fast we have to go to get beyond our atmosphere. Break out of here and we're on our way. Yes. But, but. But, Wayne, why gamble millions on, on, on space travel? Progress, gentlemen. I'm always for progress. This is next. Here's a model of our spaceship. This is next, and if it isn't enough, there's money. There's money. There's more wealth, more minerals, more than anything we ever dreamed of up there. Well, this and I'm is... going to be the first man to find them. This is all very well theoretically. Wayne, even you, a spaceship. In view of the initial expenditure and in view of what Marty says about the ship, that it won't fly... You haven't got the guts. Wayne, even for you, a spaceship. That's right, a spaceship. A ship to take me into a world never before known by man. Crowder Enterprises, controlling not just one world, but all worlds. A mad idea. But I tell you, Davis, I'll do it if it takes everything I own. And the corporate assets. Wayne, as controller of this company, I, uh, I feel obligated to call your attention to the tremendous cost involved. Okay, you call it to my attention. All right, Wayne, all right. We'll go along part of the way, but if we should find ourselves sinking... All the way, Davis. We'll go all the way. Remember that. Well, I, I don't know, Wayne. I'll, I'd, I'd have to sleep on it. That's right. You do that. You sleep on it. I start now. Marty, you wait. Well? Stop barking, Wayne. This is old toothless Marty. The villain has left the room. If the imagination they lack could be honest, we'd own the world. Well, a lot of what he says is true. No advice, Marty, not even from you. You pay my salary, Mr. Crowder. Marty, if they line solid against me, you're the one man I need. Twenty years. A lifetime. Listen to this. Crowder's gall in tackling the impossible at times verges on mania has witnessed his introduction of superjet atomic engines on his commercial air and water line. But this man has always succeeded, and if and when the first rocket shoots into space, Crowder will be on it. Is that why you're doing it, Wayne, to fulfill a magazine's prediction? Think of it, Marty, the first man to conquer space. You've got to get way up to reach a star, Wayne. If you fall, you're Humpty Dumpty. Translation? Well, I'm your chief engineer. My opinion on the feasibility of this flight may cut no ice, but the cost is my department, and it should interest you. Sure. The initial cost of building the rocket, plant, personnel, research, equipment, construction, well over 500 million. Go on, keep scaring me. Well, you have to shut down all of the Crowder Enterprises in favor of Project Rocket. It'll take every ship, every plane, everything you want. You'll have to scrounge in all parts of the world for material. It may take months, perhaps a year. And you'll be in direct competition with every nation on the globe. 
you'll be bidding in the open market for steel, aluminum, manganese, tungsten. That plunks you right into the middle of the defense work. Now, if you fight to procure those materials, you, you'll be the most hated man in America. Until the ship flies. All right, then, let's get down to the big point. We spend millions to build our rocket. All right, we can do that. But we can't fly it, Wayne. There isn't an engine in existence to power such a ship into space. I'll find the engine. Where? Bancroft, that campaign I outlined yesterday. Full sweep starting tomorrow morning. I want newspaper ads, radio, TV, the works. Get on it. Marty, money and determination can buy anything. Somewhere in this world there's this man with my engine and I'm going to find him. Start building the rocket. And Marty. meeting a month ago, you've spent exactly twenty and one half million dollars and still no engine to power your ship. Glad to see you've been keeping tabs on me. I'm controller of the company, Wayne. How do you do? I'm chairman of the board and largest stockholder. Largest individual stockholder, don't forget that. This company's owned by thousands of small stockholders and I'm going to see that they're protected. They're little people. Yes, but with big voices. Wayne, you've railroaded this thing through. If you fail, you're going to be held to account for every single penny of the stockholders' money that you've gambled and lost. I won't lose. I never have. Well, don't start now, Wayne. I warn you. Don't start now. I think you should see this man. Mr. Wilkins, Mr. Crowder. Well? Mr. Wilkins was highly recommended by our London office. He, uh, he has something to show you. No models, Mr. Wilkins? No designs? It's really quite simple. <clears throat> My motor is based on the principle of the common magnets. Electromagnetism. Utilization of the force of gravity, or its opposite, counter-gravity. I think I can show you very simply this way, Mr. Crowder. As you know, opposite poles attract. Similar poles repel. With this principle, I can power a spaceship. I've proven it with my working model in London. Marty? Yes, <clears throat> London looked into it pretty thoroughly, and I've checked it over. I think it'll work. What do you want? I want to help you build a spaceship. Why? You have your reasons, I have mine. The money? Perhaps. Here's a model of our rocket. It's useless. You'll have to build a different ship. This will not house my motor. You mean we must junk everything we've done up until now? Yes. You're mad. Hold it, Marty. But 
But that means we start all over and throw $20 million out the window. Any better suggestions? No. No, I haven't. Okay, let's get started. One thing I must insist upon. No questioning of basic design. This I demand. This you'll get. One thing more. I must make the test flight. What? This is what I've been working for. Thirty years of study and work. Space travel is all I know. It's been my life. Okay. We've got our operation set up at my airport in New Mexico. We'll fly out there in the morning. Marty? How many millions does this toy represent? Give it to Davis as a souvenir. We'll get back to our tale of tomorrow in just a moment. But first, let's look back at the world of yesterday. Let's go back to the days of the famous Count of Monte Cristo. In those days, men were men. They lived daringly, dramatically, adventurously. So now Chrysler, inspired by Monte Cristo's times, creates some dramatic new designs in men's watch bands. Each one of these new Chrysler Monte Cristo watch bands carries a handsome coat of arms. Here, for instance, is the Fleur de Lis crest, an emblem of nobility. And look at this one, featuring a royal crown. Here's the costly jewelry look, rhinestones on simulated onyx. And all Chrysler bands have super calibrated seven coil springs for extra expansion, extra flexibility. Even the Monte Cristo package is something special. It's Chrysler's unique pistol box. But best of all, these new Chrysler watch bands cost only $12.95 tax included. Less than many ordinary watch bands. So, buy the Chrysler Monte Cristo at your jeweler. Make your watch look better than new with Chrysler. Now, we return to the second act of Test Flight, starring Lee J. Cobb. Yeah. Yeah, and see that the stuff gets down there on time. Right. Well, Marty, how's everything going in New Mexico? Huh? Oh, fine, just fine. Problems, but coming. Where's Crowder? Uh, he'll be back in a minute. Why? Why? Are you trying to be funny, Martin? I always thought you were a man of science. I just work here. Mm -hmm. You work for the corporation, too. Don't be too loyal to Crowder, or you're liable to find yourself as out as he is. Look at that. This is a bit premature. What if the ship does fly? Well, it'd better fly soon. Six months and how many millions of dollars ago Crowder decided to fly into space? Well, we've gone along far enough. A threat, Mr. Davis. Wayne, you're making our company the laughing stock of the world. More than that, you seem bet on breaking us. If you break, I break. That small consolation. That's all you'll get. I warn you, Wayne. Get out. There was a meeting of the board of directors yesterday. There's no meeting of the board without the chairman of the board. We're through. We're fed up with your phony ideas of conquering new worlds. We forbid you to go on using the company assets for this madman's dream. Out. This is my plant, and that's an order. Get out. I'll get out. Starting right now, you'll not shove another voucher through without the board's permission. You try it, Wayne, and we'll put a padlock on this dream of yours. We'll put a padlock on you. That man worries me, Wayne. He won't stop me. He can't stop me. Marty, how soon will the ship be finished? 
Well, Wilkins moves in his own mysterious fashion. The man's a scientist, an engineer, a wizard. He may also be mad. Frankly, Wayne, I don't know what's going on. Let's fly down there and find out what's going on. Bancroft, now get the ship ready. We're leaving for New Mexico immediately. We're now in phase three. We were held up by the lack of magnesium. Our tensile and stress problems also held us up. Now we're about to go into phase four. How soon will the ship be ready? It's looked about the same for the last month. Obviously wrong. The phase I work at is all important. We are now in the home stretch. I ask how soon? As soon as you can furnish the fuel. We need a ton of mercurium-37. Money? That'll take another hundred million dollars. And months, many months to get what you want. I know nothing of finance. These are your problems. Turn back, Wayne. This is too big, bigger than any of us realized. I'm in too deep to turn back now. You'll have to fight the whole world. Wayne, realize what he's after. Every nation on Earth needs mercurium-37. Is it right to corner for personal use something the whole world needs? Ethics, the word gets in my way. Wayne, it's not right. It's right if it works. No matter how I get it, if I get it, and if it powers this ship into space, it's worth it if it breaks me. If they call me villain in every language in every country in the world, it's worth it if I can be the first man to fly through space. Now about this Mercurian. Well, we may have to contact sources in the Belgium, Congo, South America, Lord knows where else. You take care of that, I'll get the money. Crowder knows how to raise the money. I understand that, Wayne, but it's a big issue. Well, maybe we can keep it on the QT, and with your name on it, I think we can swing it. Right. Congo, Jim. Carol's crowd's in the bag. Sure, sure, Belgian Congo. This is your big day, Wayne. I've waited for this a long time. A long, long time. And if it doesn't fly? It'll fly. How soon are we ready to go up? Very soon. We've fueled up. Now just a little checking on the motor. I thought we're through with that phase. It needs rechecking. We must be precise. You said we'd be ready to take off today. Perhaps. And again, perhaps not. We must be precise. Listen, my secret little friend. I've played a blind game of cards with you and with a partner who won't let me see his hand. I'm fed up, you understand? This ship better take off today. You'll let me get to the ship, Mr. Crowder. I'll complete the work. Who does he think he is? I think he stole a billion to build this crate. Oh! It took manipulation, Marty, a mess of it. That mercurium deal broke me. I oversubscribed our stock. Wayne, you must be mad. Oh, it's only money. A gamble, they'll get it back and more. Wayne, it's other people's money. How many men did you break to put this deal over? You're turning against me too, Marty. I thought you were my friend. Wayne, that's not the point. What's all that noise? <laughs> get out. Crowder, you're through. The corporation's taking it. I'm the corporation. You were the corporation. If I succeed, we'll be ten times more powerful than we ever dreamed of. Not we, you. You did this for Wayne Crowder, not anybody else. Just you. Why stop me now? The ship's ready to take off. Because there's a half billion dollars worth of fuel and material out there that I'm not going to let you wreck. Williams, we're taking off. That could be dangerous. I, I haven't checked... I said we're taking off today. All right. I'm ready. How soon? I'll be out in the ship in 60 seconds. Prepare to launch. The ship is not taking off. We're taking off in 60 seconds. You better pray that ship doesn't fly, because if it does, you're dead, Davis. When I get back, I'll own this world, and there won't be any room for you on it. If you're not moving out of here, I'll stop you somehow. Stop. The 
call your bluff, Davis. We can't stop him now. Nothing can stop him now. I hope it blows him. Okay. All set. Let's go. Zero minus five. Rocket vents open. The takeoff inertia will be terrific. Now quit Sorry. stalling. Let's get going. Zero minus four. Generators on. Zero minus three. Internal pressure on. Zero minus two. Fuel activated. Zero minus one. Zero. most powerful man in the world. Look at it. The earth at my feet. I'll build a bigger rocket powerful enough to reach Mars. We will reach Mars in this ship. Okay. That proved it can be done. We can turn back now. No, we'll go on. I said turn back now. We can't turn back. The course is set for Mars. Mars and this ship, you're out of your mind. I've planned this voyage for a long, long time. I built this ship to go to Mars. Turn back! Turn back! Turn back! I can, Mr. Crowder. If we kill me, we'll never hit anything. You can't move them, Mr. Crowder. The controls are frozen. I'm going home to my planet Mars. Home? Mars? Yes. You see, Mr. Crowder, it wasn't wealth and power that brought me to you. You wanted to build an empire on Mars. I simply wanted to go home. from tonight, look for another exciting tale of tomorrow, The Search for the Flying Saucer, starring Jack Potter with Olive Deering. And now, a final word from the Chrysler Kids. Jack Chrysler. Jack Chrysler. On my hand. On your hand. Crowned with royal crest to make it look grand. So grand, it's Chrysler. It's Chrysler. For me, too. For you, too. Makes your watch look better than new. Quality, style, and value, too. It's the man to have on hand. It's Chrysler. Makes your watch look at its best. The glamour of the royal crest. It's Chrysler.
make your watch look better than you with Chrysler's handsome Monte Cristo expansion watch band with a richly enameled crest. And ladies, see how Chrysler's new flirtation watch band adds jeweled beauty to your watch. Remember, look for Jack Chrysler at your jeweler. It's the name that means quality in watch bands. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.